so we are talking about conformers of substituted cyclohexanes. Um, for conformers of cyclohexanes that are substituted, if we have a monosubstituted ring, the uh, equatorial position for the substituent will always be the more stable position. Equatorial is always more stable than axial for anything other than hydrogen. And that is because that there is less um, steric strain due to less electron cloud repulsion. So equatorial is, has less steric strain. In the axial position, the methyl group is eclipsed with the hydrogens in the axial position at one and at carbons that are three carbons away. And so we have steric interactions between the electron clouds of the axial hydrogens with the axial methyl group. And so that is why the axial substituent is less stable. We can look at the substituents in a Newman projection to see more clearly how they are eclipsed. So here are cyclohexane rings in looking at cyclohexane in a Newman projection. Okay, so again, um, we have carbons one, two, and three labeled. Carbon four is the big circle on the left. Carbon five is the back carbon. And then carbon six is the big circle on the right, if you're looking at structure B. So if you look at structure B and the methyl group is in the axial position, you can see that the CH3 and the H at five, the axial H at five and the axial H at carbon three are all eclipsed with each other. And this is the um, sin position for a monosubstituted ring. And we call this one three diaxial strain because the carbons are one, three apart. If you look at structure A and you see the methyl group in the equatorial position at carbon, um, we'll call that carbon one as well. One, two, two, three in the middle four at the circle, five at the back with the square, and then six at the big circle on the left, right, on the right. Okay, so the carbon five and the carbon um, that is the substituent are um, staggered and anti when the substituent carbon is in the equatorial position. And so this is very stable and has less steric strain compared to when the carbon is in the axial position and eclipsed with hydrogens that are on carbons that are three carbons away. So we call, as I said, this type of strain with the substituent um, carbon interacting with ring hydrogens, 1,3 diaxial strain, and this is very um, high steric hindrance and a very unfavorable conformation. So because the rings, the ring bonds can rotate slightly and flip, um, it will spontaneously have a ring flip that favors the equatorial position, and we can demonstrate that using um, reaction arrows showing the favored conformation with a longer arrow. 
comparing conformers. So if we look at the gauche cyclobutane um, interaction, if you the energy of that interaction is 0.87 kilocals per mole, and it's less stable than an anti. Um, relating this to axial energy, having one three diaxial interactions is like having two gauche, uh, two times one gauche interaction, and it makes the the axial less stable than the equatorial. So it's just trying to quantify how much strain are we experiencing when we have um, this eclipsed 1-3 diaxial strain. So here is a table showing the equilibrium between conformers of the chair conformation. So when the substituent shown on the left hand column of the table is equatorial versus when it is axial. And remember that um, KEQ is products over reactants. So um, for this reaction, you would say um, axial product the substituent is axial in the reactant and equatorial in the product. As they have written it in this table. So flipping between hydrogen um, as a substituent. So if hydrogen is axial or equatorial, the equilibrium says the equilibrium is one. That means that ax axial and equatorial are equivalent. The ring is flipping 50-50. Neither side of the reaction is favored. Look at the methyl group, which is the next in the table, circled in red. The methyl group, replacing uh, a methyl group at an axial position, the KEQ is 18 if the methyl group is on the ring. What does that mean? That means 18 to 1, the, the, um, the position of the methyl group is 18 equatorial, 18 times it will be equatorial versus one time being axial. That's the ratio of equatorial to axial. So it favors equatorial 18 to 1. And as we increase in substituent size to ethyl, the favorite for the equatorial position goes up as the group gets larger. So then we have 21 to 1 favoring equatorial. We get to an isopropyl group or a propyl group that is connected at carbon 2 of the propyl and we get to favoring 35 to 1, the um, equatorial position versus the axial position. And then we get to the T-butyl substituent. And the T-butyl substituent is so large that it favors the, um, the equatorial position over the axial position by 4,800 to 1. Now, some other groups, uh, you may be surprised to know that they are smaller. This is not only because it's fewer atoms. Think about a methyl group is four atoms, but because the atoms are not that big. So cyanide, it's a small condensed structure. It's only two atoms. It doesn't affect equatorial axial as much. The halogens, they're not that big. The favorite, they are favored for the equatorial position, but not much more than hydrogen. So you can see that those groups are not giant. While the equatorial position is favored for anything other than hydrogen, um, the biggest effect on favoring equatorial positions is based on carbon groups. Okay, just some interesting facts here. Um, looking at 
cyclohexane structures. Starch and cotton are a, a polymer of six-membered cyclohexane rings containing carbon and oxygen. The only difference between digestible um, starch that we can use for energy and indigestible cotton that we do not use for energy is the bond between the cyclohexane rings. In starch, the bond between the rings is axial on one side and equatorial to the other ring. The axial bond is weaker than the equatorial bond. It's less favored for the axial position. Because it's less favored, it's weaker and less stable, and that means that our system can break the bond more easily. And so we can, our, our enzymes can digest starch. But if you look at the, um, the cellulose polymer below, you see that the connection between the cyclohexane rings is equatorial to both rings. This is more stable, which means the bond is stronger. And because this bond is stronger, we do not have the chemicals or enzymes necessary to break that stronger bond. And then we cannot break the polymer into glucose units that we use for energy. Cis and trans isomers. A cis isomer has both sub is so you only uh, encounter cis and trans isomers for di substituted rings. Di substituted rings can have cis and trans isomers. So when we have two substituents on a ring, a cis isomer will have both substituents on the same side of the ring. So what they've shown on the figure at the left is that both substituents that are methyl groups are below the ring, or what they say down. So for the axial, it's very clear that it's down, but for the equatorial, we can tell that it's down because the bond is less than horizontal. Okay, so it's not at a perfect zero degree horizontal line, it's less than that. And that's how I would describe it. If the horizontal line is zero degrees, then the equatorial bond is less than zero degrees. And you can draw in a line if it helps. So less than zero degrees. And then when we have a trans uh, cyclohexane ring with two substituents, one of the substituents is above the ring. And so the angle is, if it's equatorial, is greater than zero. And the angle for the other equatorial bond has to be less than zero below the ring. Um, so that would be one way of determining cis and trans. Um, if it's trans, one is above and one is below. If it's cis, they are either both above or they are both below. I forgot that I had animation on this slide. <laughs> okay. Um, for every dye substituted ring, there are, of course, two chair conformers because there is a slight rotation that can occur in the ring. So 
for the cis 1, 4, it can flip from having uh, which carbon is axial and which carbon is equatorial. If the carbon is axial on one conformer, after the ring flip, it will be equatorial. So if it's axial here, it becomes equatorial after the ring flip. And then for the trans isomer, again, the ring flip can occur. But in this case, from the position of where the methyl groups are, a ring flip results in two equatorial bonds becoming two axial bonds. For the structures at the top, this is 1,4-dimethylcyclohexane, the energy of the two um, conformers is equal because in one conformer we have one axial and one equatorial, and in the second conformer we have one axial and one equatorial. That's equal. But in the trans 1,4 dimethylcyclohexane, we go from having two equatorial substituents to two axial substituents. And because equatorial is always more stable than axial, the reduction in the number of equatorial substituents results in a less stable ring. Each axial substituent for a disubstituted ring has two diaxial interactions. And so as the number of axial substituents increases, the ring strain, or not the ring strain, the steric strain increases. For cis and trans isomers, when you draw the isomer, you should always put the largest group in the equatorial position first. After you draw the largest group in the equatorial position, you can fill in the second substituent. And you can fill in the second substituent based on whether it is going to be cis or trans and how far away it is from the first substituent. But if you're trying to draw the more stable conformer, you always want to draw the larger group equatorial to get the most stable conformer. And this is demonstrated for the top figure, have T-butyl group in an equatorial position and then a methyl group in an equatorial position. So we go from having two equatorial positions before a ring flip. After the ring flip, we will have two axial positions Equatorial is more stable, so the first structure was the more stable conformer, and um, the, the ring will exist in this conformation for a greater percentage of time. For the second um, molecule, the trans 1, 2, tert butyl 3 methyl cyclohexane, we start out with one T-butyl group in an, ax in an equatorial position and in a methyl group in an axial position. After a ring flip, we have a methyl group equatorial and a T-butyl group axial. Because the substituents are not equivalent, one substituent is favored at the equatorial position over the other. The larger group in the equatorial position gives the more stable ring as illustrated, more stable for T-butyl, the big group, to be equatorial. We can have two rings that are fused together, so they share carbons. I've circled the shared carbons. And these rings can exist either as transfused rings, which are more stable, or cyst fused rings. They cannot flip between the two um, structures. They are locked in that position. There is no flipping between cis and transfusion. But the transfused rings are more stable, and what that means for us is that the transfused rings are more naturally occurring. And one example of transfused rings is seen in cholesterol. So natural products that need to be stable tend to be transfused. And that's the end.